This week, we're looking at eye-opening breakthroughs, and not just on Earth. Astronaut Karen Nyberg blasted off for her mission aboard the International Space Station in May. She'll be there conducting research until November. We are pleased to have Karen Nyberg with us from about 250 miles above the Earth. Karen, good morning. Morning to you. I'm happy that I can uh, join you this morning. We're going to talk to you in a minute about some of the science experiments you're conducting. But first, I have to say, I think you're one cool mom because <laughs> you left a three year old son, Jack, at home. Uh, you missed his first day, I think, at preschool. How is that being away from your young son? Of course it's hard, um, but we do have great communication. I send down a video to him every day that's about 20 seconds long, and um, my husband sends up pictures and videos, and, and uh, our support people at NASA do the same. And so, you know, there's there are people in the military who leave their families all the time, so this is nothing unusual or new. Um, there's people going through it all of the time. Karen, I, I love looking at you in space, and you have to say, we love looking at your hair so standing straight up. It's so cool looking for us down here on Earth. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not too bad to take care of. Every so often, Velcro becomes a problem. Karen, one of the things that you're doing up there, you're, taking, you're doing some experiments looking at the effects of space on the human body, aren't you? That's right. We actually are looking at quite a few things. One of the things about living in space is your body doesn't need things the same way that it needs them on Earth, like your bone structure. And we found that the degradation of bone in astronauts is way faster than an elderly woman with osteoporosis. And so we're definitely doing a lot of study on that. We found out recently over the past few years that uh, several of the astronauts are coming back after long duration space flights with vision problems, uh, degradation in their vision. And we just, just this increment kicked off a whole suite of tests looking at ocular health. Karen, this year half of the newest class of NASA astronauts are women. Um, what do you think uh, that means for the way we explore space and changes in science? Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And I think it's a natural evolution of things that eventually more women are starting to get into the fields. You know, the first astronaut class many years ago, they selected all you know, test pilots, and there weren't any women test pilots at the time. And as we get more and more women that are excelling in these areas, we're just naturally going to get more and more women. Karen, your bio reads, astronaut by day, aspiring quilter, crafter, <laughs> artist, runner by night. Night, wife and mommy 24 7 how do you do it well right now I'm probably slacking on the wife and mommy part <laughs> and I'm actually slacking on the rest of it too um, <laughs> mostly playing astronaut um, but I, I just like, I like to do a lot of different things. You know, I think it's important for people to have hobbies and to have um, various things they can do at the end of the day um, when they get home from work, things that are relaxing to them. To me, it happens to be sewing. Uh, I could sew for hours. It's very relaxing for me, and I love to create things, and so it's very satisfying to me when I, when I spend some time and create something, especially when I can give it as a gift. It just makes me feel very good. Wow. And quickly, what is that ring bouncing around on your neck that we see? This is my husband's wedding band. I have my husband's wedding band and also a little charm with a J on it for my son. Son Jack. Son Jack. San ja son Jack. Um, so this was a first for us. A first for great. us. Karen from space. Wonderful to talk to you. Karen. Thanks so much.